These things crawling all over my face are black soldier flies. What have I done? Why did I agree to this episode? They are farmed by the billions and hailed as a potential superfood. The future of sustainable protein. Mình ứng dụng cái con ruồi lính đen này tạo cái protein mới, nguồn nguồn protein mới. The larvae are supposedly a revolution in animal feed and even potentially a revolution for human diets also. So can humans also eat this stuff? So this is oh, whole handfuls. Mm. Check. But is this some kind of dystopian world economic forum enforced nightmare crafted by global superpowers or is this a bona fide grassroots solution to the pressing environmental and food security challenges of developing nations? I don't know what's more uncomfortable, this in my hands right now or having those flies all over my face, probably the face. Today, we're diving in deep to discover the truth, exploring their use across the Philippines and Vietnam. When I visited the Philippines, I met with Dr. Brahman, who is setting up black soldier fly larva demo farms all around the country. He advocates for some rather radical approaches, from what to feed the black soldier fly larva, to what to do with the larva themselves. Every time I go out, especially at night, mm -hmm. you see lots of cats, yeah. dogs. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I pick them up. Wow. And just feed it here. Uh, sometimes it's also good if you have a funeral parlor, okay. a neighbor. Wow. And if they don't get the, the body, you can just give it there. Really? <laughs> is that a joke? No, 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 it's not. Really? Yeah, you can do it. But one thing is pretty clear when I visit it. This was in more of a concept farm stage. They tend to put their eggs in crevices like this. Okay. So that it could be safe from mm -hmm. other predators. Uh, it's still kind of creepy having them crawl all over you. It, it's okay. Actually, I don't uh, feel irritated when they're here. Yeah, maybe you're more used to it than me. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's one also. While the small scale productions he is setting up can still produce a rather staggering amount of lava. For a ton of waste, yeah. you produce 20%. Okay. That is your larvae. So meaning if you have one ton right. every day, right. you have 200 every day. The facility was really about education about demonstrating the possibilities to other Filipino farmers. Are you trying to get other people to do this as well? Yeah, so you have to look for somebody. And you know, it's easier for you both to understand each other. Mm. But if you go to somebody whom you do not know, it's that's very, very impossible. Mm. You see, black soldier fly larva are compelling due to their staggering efficiency and potential as feed. A creature that can balloon its body weight 5,000 times in just a couple of weeks, that can consume just about any leftovers and food waste and transform it into a near perfect blend of proteins, fats, amino acids, minerals, and vitamins. They're tackling both our waste problems and our insatiable need for proteins in a way that could embarrass traditional resource-heavy farming methods. And obviously, the potential that black soldier fly larvae are offering is mainly as a sustainable livestock feed. But that doesn't stop some from promising them as a new frontier in human nutrition also. And ever since I visited the Philippines, I've wanted to see what a real life commercial facility looks like for some time. Something that isn't merely for demonstrative purposes, but a factory providing large amounts of feed on a commercial scale and that is solving real world issues. It is pretty surreal the amount of flies in here. It's kind of crazy. Luckily, I found something just like that in my adopted home country of Vietnam. So today I find myself in Dom Ngai province, not all that far from Saigon. And here I'm meeting up with Mr. Thai, an entrepreneur focused on developing sustainable solutions for Vietnam's farming industry. He operates a huge 4,000 square meter facility, generating solar power and underneath those giant shades, producing billions and billions of black soldier fly lava. Today guys, I'm pretty proud to be sponsored by BetterHelp. You see, there have been moments in my life where fear and anxiety were pretty constant companions of mine. Times when I felt that life's challenges just seemed too big to overcome. I felt lost, directionless. In general, I just didn't know how to move forward. But eventually I realized that I didn't have to navigate these kind of things alone. That sometimes 
Turning to friends and family isn't the only option, or even the best option. And the professional therapy can really make a difference. For me, it's been a powerful tool for understanding myself better and finding ways to move forwards with purpose, confidence, and conviction. But what really sets BetterHelp apart is just its accessibility. It's a platform where you're matched with a therapist who fits your unique needs. It's quick and it's easy. You just fill out a form and typically in under 48 hours, you're already connected with a therapist. In my experience, it was well under that time. And from there, you can proceed however you want through messaging, calls or a video chat. Honestly, it's the most straightforward and comfortable way that I can even imagine getting started with therapy. So if you feel like this could help you out, there's a link in the description that will get you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Clicking that link helps support the channel and it gets you started on a path that I found personally pretty powerful. Back to the video. Guys, today we are here with Mr. Tan, the owner of this huge, huge black soldier fly farm. I have seen this kind of thing once in the Philippines, but it is nothing like this. Let's find out how it goes down. We're starting out in the breeding area, the first stage of black soldier fly larva production. Mr. Tai's facility houses these flies in carefully controlled environments. We need to cover and we need to take the sunshine in this one, seven days. Mm -hmm. They will get to earth uh, 400,000 and 500,000 eggs. Four yeah. to 500,000 uh, eggs eight. every seven days? Every seven days. Each fly? Yeah, each fly. Wow. With netting to keep them in one area and fake leaves for them to rest on. Although, judging by the number of swallows hanging around this place, there must be a large number of escapees. This is black soldier fly farming. Oh, what have I done? Here, female flies lay their eggs between two pieces of wood that are set up for easy collection. Actually, inside this one, we have the special material mm. for, you know, for them uh, come uh, on the top and come in there for uh, take out the dirt. This is one of the most intense farming processes I've ever been a part of. You definitely got to be pretty comfortable with insects if you're going to do this stuff. Man, wow. After the eggs are harvested, they're moved to a dark room where they are set up in large blue boxes to hatch. The eggs are produced in such huge quantities that they themselves can be sold as one of the products to feed smaller fish. So the eggs sort of sit on like a sieve and when they hatch, they're going to fall through to the bottom of this green bin. And this is where we're sort of brushing them to the corner and collecting what are just absolutely tiny microscopic larvae. And once hatched, they are tiny microscopic maggots, but that will not last. These things grow quickly. Hatched larvae are transferred to grow out basins, large concrete tubs where these voracious eaters will be gorging on all they can possibly eat. During this phase, the larvae are fed a diet of rich organic waste materials. Mr. Tai largely uses organic waste from beer production, as well as organic waste from other farms operating nearby in the area. I think it's gonna be pretty hard for us to truly capture the scale of this, but it is pretty wild just how much volume of larvae they can produce with a warehouse that just in this one room, each of these sort of squares of larvae must have close to 500 kilos, I'd say, of pure protein. That's a lot of animal feed, that's a lot of anything for you if you want. The Vietnamese climate is perfect for these guys. The high temperatures and high humidity create ideal conditions for these larvae to reach their growth potential. And this stage is a period of intense feeding and growth. It typically spans 14 to 21 days and prepares the larva for harvesting. After more than two weeks, it means 14 days, we will eat this one. So half of it you leave for chicken feed and yeah. half you keep for yeah. the other cycle. Yeah. Okay guys, so this is the next generation of black soldier flies. And there's just, I mean, there's thousands of these things. You only need to keep 10% for the next generation. The rest is product. Harvesting is a relatively simple and manual process, using a sieve to separate the larva from any remaining organic waste. There's also a quick quality assurance test, and then they're packaged for shipping. Mr. Tai. Yeah, hello. Thank you very much for showing me around the farm. Mm. You have a huge operation here. Mm. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Thực sự thì bên mình cũng triển khai cái này được 4 tháng rồi. Four, four months only? Four months. Yeah. This seems like a pretty big facility for four months. What are you trying to do with farming the black soldier fly? Cái mục tiêu của dự án là mong muốn là 
đưa ra một hướng đi mới để phát triển cái thứ bậc của trang trại lên từ chỗ là nông dân mà lên chỗ là công nhân. So you want to turn this farm into a factory. Yes. A factory of black soldier fire. Yeah. Why is there such a demand for this product in Vietnam? Ngành công nghiệp về đánh bắt cá sẽ phải tăng lên à, theo thời gian thì như vậy thì sức phá hủy của con người đối với môi trường nó sẽ tăng lên tăng lên tăng lên và cái nguồn protein thay thế duy nhất mà để mà tái tạo lại cái à, tự nhiên thì chỉ có là protein của cái ruồi lính đen, nguồn protein mới. Mm. It's the most sustainable way to meet Vietnam's uh, demand for for protein feed. Yeah. Who is buying this? Why are the farmers buying this product from you? Yeah. Cái chi phí sản xuất nó đang là lớn mm. và cái sản phẩm chỉ cung cấp được cho những cái động vật mà có giá trị cao à, như là pet food. Is it easy to sell this product to the fish farms? Fred, lá về we cannot do shipping in the far away with a mm. long time. We only shipping in the half day only. Yeah. Right, right. Only that yeah. So this is the problem at the moment. Wow, where are you guys five years from now? What is your vision for here? Tìm ra giải pháp cho cái cái vận chuyển bằng à, những cái sản phẩm mới có chất lượng nhưng mà phải giảm giá thành. Sản phẩm đầu ra là à, phải cam kết là phải an toàn hơn khi mà mình sản xuất số lượng lớn. Đó, như vậy đấy. thì cũng mong muốn mọi người hiểu về cái cái vấn đề này thì nếu người nào có hứng thú thì có thể là à, liên hệ với bên tài để mà mình có thể là à, tìm ra những giải pháp mới hơn cho cái này à, không phải là những là chỉ là pet food nữa ừ. mà nó sẽ mở rộng hơn được cái nguồn năng lượng mới hơn nhé Ok, well I wish you the best of success I would love to come back here in 5 years and you have a huge much bigger soldier fly farm yeah. Thì, uh, ok, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This place, to be honest, is like a WEF dream. They'll get ya. Don't worry, this stuff will one day be human food. Better be careful. I'm just kidding. You guys are watching too much YouTube. But what is the need for all of this feed? What's it actually used for? Well, one of the biggest areas of need in Vietnam is aquaculture. Vietnam's aquaculture industry has witnessed remarkable growth, emerging as a powerhouse in the seafood market. With production scaling into the millions of metric tons annually, the country has cemented its status as a leading exporter of shrimp and a variety of fish species. To check out exactly how this goes down, I'm taking a trip down to Lom Suin, one of the many industrial towns in the now booming Mekong region. While the city's industry explodes, many of the river dwellers here are living a far more traditional life, and fish farming is a big part of it. Hi, come on from floating markets to breakfast sellers. Wow, perfect. Hold on there. Not too cooked, not too soft. That's really solid. And of course, floating villages of fish farms. The Mekong is somewhere that has just absolutely fascinated me for the longest period of time. And I think it is this just, this water life, this living on the river. Maybe it's because I've just come back from Kauai Kauai. I don't know, but this giant delta, has a culture and an ecosystem all of its own. These are floating villages that dot along the river. However, this booming industry faces significant environmental challenges. The majority of farmed fish species here rely on feed that is made from wild caught fish. This creates strain on the marine ecosystem and raises concerns about the sustainability of Vietnamese aquaculture growth. After all, if we're just turning fish into more fish, then what exactly are we doing here? So the basic process here is they have what I believe to be some kind of cornmeal. Maybe we can ask, get a more accurate answer. They then mix it with water and fish, dead fish. It all gets ground up into fish pellets and that is fed directly into these fish ponds here. That's essentially how this house gets by. Just fish farming in your living room. Pretty wild. It's kind of crazy to me these houses just like Network together with boards and planks. Oh god, I'm gonna drop my camera again. So some of these sort of network together floating fish farm villages have the nets just entirely inside and some of them are these fish I guess are lucky enough to be outside, have a little bit of sunlight. These holding pens just absolutely packed with fish. It is pretty crazy. Just teeming, teeming, teeming with fish. I'm sure there's gonna be some people in the comments with some problems. 
This is just the reality of life here. This is how it makes economic sense for these people to farm these fish. Thousands and thousands and thousands of fish under every household. And here in the Mekong, it's not exactly fresh fish we're using as feed either. Much of what I witnessed was pretty close to rotten. I don't know if this really matters, but I don't know about you guys. There's a certain amount of reassurance that comes from knowing that the meats you are eating are fed clean feeds. And this, of course, is where black soldier fly larva can come in. A game-changing solution that promises to revolutionize aquaculture feeds as it does feed for other livestock. Black soldier fly larva with their high protein and fat contents offer a sustainable, effective alternative to traditional fish meals. You know, it really is a pretty impressive creature. Like it is crazy to me just how many of these things you can produce in such a tiny space. Man created the waste. When God saw this problem, he created the black soldier fly. Hmm. Potentially alleviating pressure on wild fish stocks and supporting the continued expansion of Vietnam's aquaculture sector in a sustainable, clean way. Guys, that is it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that rundown of black soldier fly larva farming and its uses in Southeast Asia, especially here in Vietnam. I think it has a ton of potential. Maybe we do a follow up a couple years from now. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.